Hello and good morning. The camera is looking rather foggy, isn't it? Excuse me while I do something. I didn't have a preview thing on this. Hold it, Paul, please. Oh, don't. Oh, everything's falling apart. Complete collapse. Is that better? I think that's better. You should always clean the camera before you start. Hello, I'm Casey Durango of Go Keto with Casey, where I like to talk about how I've lost 97.4 pounds since starting the ketogenic protocol and how you may be able to lose weight, improve your health, and regain control of your life like I did. So if you could please let me know that you can see and hear me, I would appreciate that. Uh, good morning from New York. Gail Mayo says, good morning from Ontario, Canada. Rosemary waits, good morning from Connecticut. So good. Um, good morning. Yes. Yes. Scott. Yes. Can see and hear you. Thank you, Scott. So today's topic is, pro I'm going to say it is probably the most, when I hear from people, the most anxiety producing, inducing topic for people, not just who are following the ketogenic protocol, but like maybe since they're 13 years old. The scale, the bathroom scale. What an inanimate object tells us about ourselves. So I'm going to, for those of you who don't know my story, I was morbidly obese for 30 years. I tried all the things we all tried. I knew since 1977 that low carb, the Atkins diet, the induction period of Atkins worked beautifully for me. I lost the 13 pounds in college I wanted to lose tossed the book, came back to it again in the early 2000s, had a couple of, uh, had a, I, I allowed myself to tell myself, oh, well, then life came at me and I went off of it and put the weight back on anyway. But I did want to take insulin for type 2 diabetes. I was age 55. I'd given up on losing weight. I Googled how to not take insulin for type 2 diabetes. And lo and behold, keep your carbs 20 grams or fewer a day. Total carbs, not net. If it's not on page four, link below, don't eat it, but you don't even need a food list. Fatty sources of protein, limited amounts of non-starchy vegetables, limited amounts of leafy greens, and limited amounts of full-fat dairy. Don't eat if you're not hungry. Stop when you're satiated. So that's the protocol. Th what happens is when you do this, you start burning fat for fuel. If you're not over-consuming dietary fat and not over-consuming food in general, your appetite is suppressed, you consume less, your body starts burning body fat for fuel, and you lose weight. Not only that, but inflammation is reduced, your blood sugar comes down, your blood pressure may come down, your joints may not hurt so much, your acid reflux, all this stuff. So all these wonderful things happen. But what do we focus on? The scale. What does the scale read? It's understandable. For some of us, for decades, what the scale reads determines our day, no matter what else is going on with us. And particularly if we've tried several times to lose weight and maybe lost some and then rebounded, as it were. The scale is like a torture device. So what do we do about this? There are many options, and all of this is individualized. All I can do is talk about my experience and my understanding of the protocol and, and how I've done, how I've really reclaimed my life. Do what works for you. I've been weighing myself and logging the weight essentially every day since December 18th, 2000. So over 21 years and I was started at my heaviest. I'm actually 115 and a half pounds off my heaviest weight. And I'm a short person. I'm five one. So that's a lot of weight. And I clearly was a masochist because I would log my weight and I would, if it was disappointing news, uh, that was it for me. I still weigh myself every day, but it doesn't rule my day. I was happily surprised when I started the protocol because all I wanted to do was not take insulin for type 2 diabetes and I knew that was coming up. 
But because I was weighing myself every day, even when I had given up on losing weight, it was just, I mean, I'm habituated to it. The weight started coming down. It didn't drop. It was not front of the magazine type of wonderment. But I said, wow, this is good. And I'm not hungry. And wow, I'm not thinking about food. And oh boy, my joints don't hurt anymore. And oh my gosh, my mood is so much better. And they got my brain back. So all these wonderful things happened. The scale was like, you should pardon the expression, cherry on top. It was like added bonus. The other things were so much more important. If you're a person who's trying to lose weight, lose body fat, and maybe have other improvements, and if the scale wrecks your momentum, wrecks your motivation, wrecks your day, try not getting on it. Try focusing fo focusing on other measures. And you don't need to necessarily measure anything. A measure being, do I not need an afternoon nap now? Oh my gosh, I didn't even think about eating. I usually have eaten four times by now. Um, it, it does, is my acid reflux improving? Are my clothes fitting looser? The, these are things we can we can see and feel. So if the scale motivates you or gives you data that informs your decision making, awesome. Sorry, sound? Everyone else having trouble with sound? She said it's like Casey's great accountability. So you guys can hear me? I wish, hey Helen, I wish there was a sound, a sound you know, thing like this that tells me what it kind of is. Can you guys hear me? Okay, I'm going to keep talking. Okay, I'm going to keep talking. Um, okay, what was I saying? Okay, so, and keep in mind, weight fluctuates. I'm going to double dip here in talking about my page, my private Patreon group. I have shameless commerce division here, but this is actually a, a nod to patrons. I have a, a private Patreon support group, which is really where the bulk of what I do is. And I do every weekday morning, I do a, a recorded video snippet on topics suggested by patrons. But I start each day saying what the weight scale fluctuation was from the day before. I did this because so many people will be fine. They're saying, oh, I, I feel so much better. Oh, my gosh. The, you know, they'll list out five bet good things. And then they say, but I got so discouraged because I haven't lost any weight in two weeks. And so they go and have a donut. I understand that frame of mind. But at some point, we have to be logical. And if you if you can identify five improvements just from laying off the carbs. But the scale is vexing you? Ignore the scale. Not ignore it. I mean, if, you know, we kind of know. If we've earned that weight gain, we kind of know. And sometimes we will feel lighter and the scale doesn't budge. This, <laughs> I mean, my morning to morning, I will say, good morning, patrons. Hope you're well. We are well. Today is so-and-so. The scale read seven tenths of a pound higher this morning than it did yesterday morning, or 1.2 pounds higher, or 1.9 pounds lower. It's almost never that big a fluctuation, or half a pound lower. It fluctuates because that is just we are we are not robots. We're humans, and our bodies do things. So the scale, you know, I, I wrote a blog post about this. The blog, the um the bathroom scale was only invented about a hundred years ago, the, you know, the household bathroom scale. So uh, our great grands, well, actually my grandmother, I, I was born to my, my, my mother's people were older generation because of the way birth order came. My grandmother didn't have a bathroom scale. She didn't know what she weighed. Probably didn't care. <gasps> Oops. <laughs> my light fell. I need to come up with a little bit less Rube Goldberg setup here. Sorry. Live TV. Um, 
But now it has become the number one focus. First thing happens when you go into the doctor's office after they make sure you have insurance is they put you on a scale. And then probably don't ask you what you eat. So they want to know what you weigh, but they don't, don't want to know what you eat. Whereas the first thing your vet asks you is, what are you feeding? You know, Jack looks great. What are you feeding him? <laughs> My dog, Jack. The scale. It's an inanimate object. We paid for it. We own it. It should not have power over us. It's data. You are a person that, okay, their light just fell. It's going to have to stay fallen. Sorry, let me adjust this. Sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I actually almost ran behind my, my producer said, are you ready for your show? My producer is my husband. I said, yeah, I've got plenty of time. Looked up, had almost no time. Okay. Um, if, if the data informs your decision making, oh, well, I need to cut back. Or if it doesn't, or if you just like data, I do. Look at trend lines. Look, where's the, where's the thing going? I have a giant spreadsheet and I have trend lines. You know, if the next two months were like the last month, this is where you'd be. And as long as the trend line is, you know, either flat or like this, I'm, I'm good. We need to relieve ourselves from the tyranny of the scale. And it is, it is, it, it is tyrannical. And yet we do it. Some people weigh four times a day. This is probably not helpful unless it motivates you. If it motivates you, great. If it, if it demotivates you, find a different thing to look at. It's maybe number seven of importance. First of all, you, health, come, you know, blood sugar. And not everyone has blood sugar issues yet, but it might be heartburn. It might be joint pain. It might be eczema. It might be non-restorative sleep. It might be erratic moods. My mood regulated. I used to be chronically, clinically depressed before this. My depression, I now know there were some times that I was just, I was upset about something or sad, but this was depression. And I'm pretty sure it was brain chemistry, body chemistry um, impacted. And when I laid off the carbs and I stopped having, you know, insulin floodgates coming open from my pancreas and then shooting things up and down and up and down. Mood better. The scale. Make your decision for yourself. Your doctor still may want to weigh you first thing, but you don't have to weigh yourself every day if you want. How do you feel? Look for milestones that have nothing to do with the scale. Pretend you don't, pretend the scale had never been invented. Right? Just, just try to not, because some people will be doing great and then the scale upsets them and they stop. That's the main thing. Don't stop because what the scale says, unless you're pretty sure Unless you're pretty sure, it, it, we kind of do know. We can, we could put on weight on the ketogenic protocol if we overconsume fuel. Ultimately, we we have fuel requirements, and then we have fuel consumption. And if we're consuming more than we need, oh, where are you going to go? That makes sense. I want to turn my attention to the comments that are here. I so appreciate you guys allowing me to be part of your day. Um, I'm Shameless Commerce Division with a nod to the Car Talk guys. You don't have to buy one thing to be 100% successful at this protocol. As a matter of fact, some things that are being sold are counterproductive. Don't drink ketones. Burn ketones from your body. Um, but I'll sell you a mug all day long. I've got lots of mugs. I bite them myself. Lay off the carbs. Lay off the excuses. And on the back is my little... On the back of my mug is my mug saying, if I can do this, you can do this. And same thing with a steel water bottle, which actually is pretty high quality. This is all, you can see these things blow along with t-shirts. I'm stronger than a cookie. And then for my blog, I've got a few magnets left. Are you here out of habit or out of hunger? Because eating is, a lot of it's habitual. 
It's not hunger driven or nutrition needs driven. Spiral notebook, a uh, record book, not a notebook, a little record book. You can see my blog. And then my lovely patrons, private support group, depending on your pledge level, you get 20 pre-recorded video snippets a month from me. First thing in the morning, up from there, a handful of patron-only video live streams on Crowdcast. Up from there, a handful of patron-only video group sessions on Zoom. And up from there, a monthly one-on-one -on -one with me. And uh, some note cards I'm sending out to some people. It take, I have hundreds to send out. So it takes me a while. I hand address them and write handwritten notes on all of them. So anyway, there you go. Commercial over. Let's turn to comments. Oh, and hashtag Casey's Pink Drink. Glass full of ice. In this case, no sugar, ginger ale, and a splash of diet cranberry with a squeeze of lime. I used to do this with diet tonic water. And I just kind of got off the diet tonic water. Um, I just jump in. Laura and Steve Hill, good morning, Casey. Caresa, hello all. Angela Duke, but sometimes when you get on the scale and see the numbers going down, it gets you more motivated to eat correctly. Correct? Yeah. So if it motivates you, great. Realize that it is not straight line. Even when I had a lot to lose and I was first starting, and this is when most people just, you know, lose the most weight at the beginning, there were still, there were days when scale bumped up. There were weeks from one week to the next, the scale either didn't move or went up. I didn't care. I felt so much better. I didn't care. Honestly, I'm not being cavalier. I felt so much better. I didn't care. And I'm comfortable with my weight now. I'm doing a different type of experiment. I'm trying to, to measure and improve my body um, composition, increase skeletal muscle mass, decrease body fat mass, but mostly, and the scale is not really moving, the number on the scale. I'm looking at composition. So, because I want to be strong. I want to be a strong person for as long as I have left. Okay, Kara. Oh, and then thank you for writing that, Kara. Uh, the last few minutes I will turn over to, I want you guys, and you can start now, to sharing victories. Non-scale victories, scale victories, influencing other people. Kara writes, non-scale victories. Yes, it's been so long since acid reflux, achy joints, stomach aches. I even forgot I had these issues every day. Isn't it a wonder? One of the first things I noticed within the first two weeks, my joints stopped hurting. I was still very heavy. So it wasn't, oh yeah, your joints hurt because you're so fat. No. It's a very anti-inflammatory way of eating. Before we get going, I do want to remind, um, if you're in the Greensboro, North Carolina area, I'm Starting back up my in-person Go Keto with KC meetups at Wine Styles at Friendly Center. You can see that on if you go to my blog, go to my schedule. April is the second Monday of every month. Click on it, and then there's a I ask for registration just so I can let the proprietor know of the, of Wine Styles how many how many people we're looking for. It's free. There's no agenda. Just hang out and talk. Um. Reducing inflammation driven. Christy Cali Chica scale is the enemy for me. Never use one. And that keeps me on track. We learn ourselves. Kim Schmidt, thank you for making this way of life so simple. Gives us a, a better life. We love you. Well, thank you very much. Uh, muscle is the organ of longevity. I like that. Yes. Not only that, but you know. I do want to be strong. I want to walk erect. I still have, I have a, I wrenched my knee or something. I did something to my right knee, probably up in the chicken yard, either that or Jack, who gets very excited. His body and his hips are right at my knee height. And sometimes he just knocks me out from under myself. I did something. I stepped in a hole in the chicken yard or I did something. It's my only physical complaint at this point. And that'll, it'll fix. But muscle, strong, it's bioactive. We want good core strength. We want bone density. Whether you are a young female or an old male, we all will benefit from that. Oh, thank you, Keto Life Granny. Granny Audra, I appreciate that. Being strong definitely, definitely is important in older age. Absolutely. Take, just just go, go anywhere. Go to a grocery store or sit in a parking lot in your car and look at people coming and going, go to the park 
and notice the people that maybe are younger than we are who are struggling just now some there are some physical things that you know are beyond diet but a lot of we can look and see yep yep that person is on a walker because they're 150 pounds overweight and you know it's all fun and games when you know when you're 25 and I'm all about body positivity but try that on a 55 year old body ouchy um okay <laughs> Body composition is what I'm also looking for. So I bought this expensive scale. It's a consumer version of the in-body scale that some doctor's offices use for body composition. And hoping that it is consistent with itself. It's it's not like the $10,000 scale that they have at the doctor's office, but it's made by the same company. So this is what I'm doing. It's the in-body. I, I actually featured it on my blog post. Um. Ange, hey Ange, writes, Karzi, did the acid reflux go away right away or did it take some time? I've been frustrated with GERD not resolving. When I eat fatty foods like beef, I get a flare up. And Sharon T writes, composition is what I'm looking oh, yeah. Leslie writes, what do you have sprouting on your counter next to the little blue pot? Oh, okay. Nature's fascinating. Right? So I've been keeping an eye. So I have a snake plant. You know, it's very low maintenance. And, you know, when it sends up these shoots, some people cynically refer to it as mother-in-law's tongue. And the way you propagate it is really pretty simple. You just cut a wedge out and stick it in the dirt. So I did that. And I was so excited that it was kind of flourishing. And then it sent out a little pup right here, which I'm thrilled. But then when this one started to get bigger, this one started to wither. And the same thing with this one. It's got a little pup. And then it's withering. I mean, it's been in the dirt for months, months and months and months, been fine. So it's like, it's like the old generation is is going giving nutrition to the pup. So anyway, that's what it is. I'll I'll keep you posted. Um, Patty, Patty Wedge writes on scale victory for me is finding. <laughs> Finding Casey as I start this journey for the second time. Yes, I am stronger than a cookie. Thank you, Casey. I love your story. Well, thank you very much. Um, has anyone had a DEXA scan? Let me tell you what. If I knew what was going to happen, because I didn't, I would have done a couple of things. And if, if there was one thing that I would have done that I didn't do, I would have gotten a DEXA scan. That's for those who don't know, that's a whole body scan and it it lights up in different colors it'll show you body fat where the body fat is you know bone muscle and i because then i would have liked to have seen that progression i don't think it's covered by insurance i would have uh, you know broken into the cookie jar oh because there are no cookies there now for sure Karazi Anj, it wasn't overnight, but it did go away. I think as I naturally ate less and better quality food, it helped. Um, Judy Tucker, love Judy. She's lost 135 pounds. I'm also completely comfortable in my body. Five years ago, 135 pounds gone. I will be 70 years young. Casey had our first baby calf Thursday in the snowstorm. Okay, Judy's a farmer. She was a farmer, always has been a farmer, 135 pounds ago. I don't know how I haul chicken feed 25 pounds at a time up the hill 100 pounds ago. I don't know how I even just did that. Forget about birth of a calf in the snow storm. <laughs> Carissa, love your eggs. My chicks are eight weeks old Monday. Ours just turned eight weeks old this past Monday. Gail Mayo. December A1C of 7.1, April 1st, 6.4. Yay! Patty Wedge, I quit, quit eating after dinner and I quit having acid reflux and heartburn. Pro tip. Uh, DB Sally, I am late but will indulge in the replay. Judy Porterfield, hello everyone. Hello from Michigan. Uh, I did my bone. I did. My bones are great. They're talking about the scan. Congratulations, Judy. I want to be a farmer, writes Carissa. My husband and I think we are professional chicken farmers now. We have this down to a science. And you, now we have 41 chickens. 27 of them are eight weeks old. Keto Life um, Keto Life Granny Audrey. I, 
I weigh once a month on my ketoversary, so I don't let the scale bother me every day or week, which was a way to excuse overeating if I lost or starving if not. I'm down 76 pounds so far and off all meds. That's the headline, off all meds. Think about it. Vicki Dismore, good for you, Judy. Being 70 is great. Judy writes, thank you, Carissa. Farming is great. Christy Cali Chica, I'm a Cali girl and can't envision myself being a farmer, LOL. 41 chickens, oh my. <laughs> I have eight Easter eggers, writes Carissa. Gray's custom trim, yay. Thank you for sharing the simple real protocol. After seeing a famous internet doctor, I'm going to say, quote, trying to sell people her ketones, drinks, supplements, and meal plans, it's refreshing. You know, you don't have to buy anything. As a matter of fact, I would... I would argue that buying a meal plan can be dangerous because then you still, okay, if you're, an, if you're an, an instruction follower, the meal plan says, here's breakfast, lunch, dinner, and a snack. Breakfast, lunch, dinner, and a snack. You say, well, I need to eat this. But, but you're not hungry. <laughs> Don't eat. Don't eat if you're not hungry. Stop when you're satiated. Eat more slowly. That helps you become satiated because the leptin has time to tell your brain you've had enough. And uh, Gray, I always ask you, I, if you tire of it, I apologize. If you want to share with the group uh, your story, Judy Porterfield, I also don't have acid reflux at night now. No stomach meds, no wedge pillow, plus less meds in general. Terry writes, Got my mom on keto who is 82 years old. She used to eat antacids constantly, and now she has no acid reflux thanks to keto and Kara Z applause to everyone for all your efforts to help yourself and be an inspiration to others you never know who's watching and somebody you may influence someone you may impact and change their life and you'll never know because they're not about they don't know you or they're never going to give you credit for it they don't want to ask or they're embarrassed doesn't matter do the right thing for yourself Put out a positive energy to the universe. Um, let me see. Did I go over everything? Yes, they go keto with Casey Meetup if you're in the Greensboro area. Monday, 6.15-ish at Wine Styles. You can see the information at my blog. <clears throat> the next Durham Support Group meeting with Dr. Eric Westman and me is going to be in person. It will not be online. Um, that will be in Durham. But that's That'll be the first Tuesday in May. Um, Judy Tucker writes, I'm off over 10 medications. Still amazes me that the problem was carbs. Had no clue until I found Casey. Love you, my friend. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Everyone owns their, should own their own success 100%. Someone said, you changed my life. I said, no, nah, no, nah, you changed your life. I might have just changed your mind. Here's, here's all you need. Not a mug. Lay off the carbs. And then lay off the excuses because we all do that. And they are excuses. Okay. Gray's custom trim. I love this. Lost 255.2 pounds in 12 months following the protocol. Real food from a regular grocery store. No air quotes, keto foods. If it says keto on the package, it most certainly is not. Couldn't have said it better myself, Mr. Gray. Yeah, it's not. Okay. So, Costco has got keto, large print keto, granola cus, uh, clusters. And if something is touting their net carbs on the front of the label, it almost certainly is very high in total carbs. So flip the package over, look at the nutrition label, and look at the total carbs and what the serving size is. But mostly eat fatty sources of protein, limited amounts of non-starchy vegetables, limited amounts of full-fat dairy. Don't eat if you're not hungry. Stop when you're satiated. Judy writes, Casey, thank you so much for keeping it simple. No more internet confusion. Love you and Dr. Westman. Thank you, Christy Kalichi. Y'all make me blush. All right. I am going to wrap up. Thank you for sharing your stories. If the scale doesn't work for you, if it makes you upset, remember, you own it. You actually own it. And 
Food is not the boss of me. There's another t-shirt that says that. Scale is not the boss of me either. How I feel is. All right. Thanks, guys. I'd love to see you at the Go Keto with Casey meetup if you're in the area. Check it out. It'll be fun. I just like to hang out with people. And I have wine glasses that read. All I want to do is drink wine and talk about keto. Except I'm not drinking that much wine anymore. That's a different story. Thanks for another great Saturday. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Grace Custom Trim. And I will see you next time. God willing, then the creek don't rise. <laughs>